Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald, and today we want to make a video where we're going to look at making a funeral item like a wreath, but without using floral foam. So currently in the, the flower industry, there's a big debate about the virtues of floral foam outweighing the problem of them economically or uh, environmentally is really the big issue. So can we create some items that don't use foam? Well, I've had a look and I've actually done this in advance in the sense that I tried it and I trialed it. And that's actually a good tip if you have a shop or you're not unsure about something, is give it a trial go and see how it performs. So what I've done is I've used um, a coat hanger. So essentially just a strong metal coat hanger and then I've loosely bound, or firmly bound, but not overly firmly bound, with straw. Uh, so just using like a jute sort of uh, garden twine and gone round and round, just compacting the actual uh, straw onto the frame to create this wreath ring. Now you can buy wreath rings pre-made, but a lot of them are bound with nylon wire. So that's not going to help if you're wanting to be truly environmental. So for creating our wreath then, I'm going to go on the idea that you kind of use at Christmas, which is when you've got a straw base, you're just binding on materials. Now you're going to think, well, the flowers are not in water. What we would then do at the end is sink this into a tray of water so that all the flowers and the straw base are in water. And that actually worked really, really well. So what I've done is I've got all my materials kind of set up. I've got some ivy, some pine, little roses, some little Santini croissants, some of this perennial uh, sunflower that I've got, and some of my dahlias that are still going in the garden. So we've got a nice variety of materials. So the first thing, we're, what, what you really need to do first is prepare all your materials. So just cutting everything down into short sections. And then we've attached the, the twine here. And then really, I'm just gonna use my thumb to hold things on. And then we will start to bind on materials. So yes, I thought about this and I thought, how would you best do this? And um, I think, to be honest, um, you need to try things out and it is worth trying. So I, th I would imagine you could sell this to a customer telling them that it's environmental. So when I tried it out, I discovered it would have lasted for about two or three days. Um, Beyond two or three days, it starts to look a little bit sad. Um, but for a lot of people maybe sending flowers to a funeral, um, they might not need the flowers to last for any huge amount of time. And I know that sounds a bit sad, but I think it is true. So don't worry about leaving the stems long. Um, what we can do is we can neaten this all up once we get to the end. And um, it's okay to put a few things in. Just noticed there was a bug there, but it doesn't matter. So I think if you were gonna do this in a commercial way, you would have to set yourself up with the right trees for being able to leave these in overnight. You would probably want to make this the day before. And um, it did work, it wasn't a big issue. Now, I'm not too worried about leaving the stems long because actually there's still a lot of moisture in the stems. But I think if you can angle them down to this lower level, then that is perfect because that will allow it when it sits in the tree to soak up water. So essentially what you're doing is you're making this in the way that you might make a foliage wreath at Christmas. But you're also going on the idea of like a corsage where things are good for a day. It just needs to be good for the day. And if you think like that, then it's not a big issue. The only thing you might want to consider is that it's quite heavy on product. So 
out with the summer where you can get some garden materials and that, then it does have an implication if you've got to buy all the material. And obviously it's a little bit more work. There's a lot more pieces of material in here compared to a normal wreath. Um, but it is totally environmental, which is great. And that really is something that we should address. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, we need to get away from floral foam. There's certain things you can do with floral foam that's just not going to be easy to do at all with out floral foam. Um, and that's where we need to start looking for solutions. Um, I don't know if I would say that the flower industry is the, the biggest problem in the world. If I think about drinks bottles and the sheer amount of drinks bottles that are used on a daily basis throughout the world, I would say that's probably a bigger issue than floral foam. But that doesn't get away from the fact that floral foam is an issue and that that does need to be addressed. I was quite surprised at these. These actually lasted really well uh, when I did my trial version. Um, they didn't suffer in the way that I thought they would. I thought they might have just died straight away. So if you think about in a, a shop, you're going to send out your funeral work in the morning, probably to the undertaker or to the church. So I would say you would go into your shop, you would take these out of the water source that you've left them in overnight and just let them drain down a little bit. And then into the van and off it goes, by which time it will have drained any excess water, um, no problem at all. And um, it'll be fine at the funeral. Um, what you might be best to do is do what I've done here and use greenery that is actually quite strong. So when I did my trial version, I used one or two pieces of foliage that were a little bit softer. Uh, but even they surprised me, actually. They were quite good. Um, but I think material like ivy, this ivy and this pine, this is perfect. Um, it's nice and firm. You're not going to need to worry about how it's going to perform as the spray is out there. And obviously you could do this with more foliage. That would work. It's just going to help. Um, help be more economical on flour for a start. So it depends on your customer and it depends on their budget, what you have available and how you want to do it. So if you're unsure, then the best thing I could suggest is try it. When I had my shop, what I used to do is trial things. Um, so like when flower food first really came out and uh, I was unsure as to whether it was worth it. We set up some vases with some different flowers and did like a, a test. And that's a really good way to make up your own mind as to the value of things. Don't always be led by what other people are doing or saying. You make the decision and you decide on the virtue of it for you and maybe your business or your current situation. So as you can see, there's a lot of elements in doing this. It needs to be quite floral. Um, saying that, I think customers love something that is floral. Rather than skimpy. And this could be very much a style that you might want to do. Now obviously I've left this coat hanger hook, but you can remove that, you would never know that was there. And you're probably thinking, well, the coat hanger isn't going to biodegrade. 
No, that's true, but it is a natural material metal. And when you think about holly wreaths, um, traditionally, they would be on a metal base anyway. And the logic behind that is that the base is still a natural material. Uh, it's just mineral rather than organic. So you can see there's a bit of work to this. But that's okay. It's not unenjoyable. Um, and as I'm going, the string is basically tightening up the straw underneath. Could you try and stick the stems in? Yes, you could. Is it necessary? I don't think so. Um, if everything's been really well hydrated, then I don't necessarily think that there's a benefit to trying to stick the flowers in. If you had one or two key flowers that you want to place, you could actually wire them and uh, bring them in separately. That could be quite good, actually. That could be a good way of placing key flowers. The other thing you might want to do is think about maybe putting a mark on your straw base uh, so maybe pop in some big pearl-headed pins just to give you an indication of where you might want to put roses. So we've kind of got more roses here, but we could have done with another rose there. That would just give you a guide. So I think if you're a business and you were wanting to do this, you've got a couple of issues, and that'll be persuading people to go for a wreath if uh, you're finding the wreath is really the way to go. Um, and also the fact that it won't last. Uh, and the contents might be variable. Your other big issue is string getting all tied up. But we can, uh, we can live with that. So we can just tie this off. Now, this is a little bit rough and ready, to be honest. But you get the idea. So, our completed wreath. As you can see, we've got a nice compact style. There's lots of variety of materials and different textures. It's nice and colourful, so that helps as well. It would really depend on your customer, but what you could do is you could basically sell this as being quite organic and quite natural. Try and leave it open as to what flowers you're allowed to use. But there's no reason why you can't combine commercial flowers with garden flowers, with foraged foliage. You could really mix it up to what materials you can easily source. Now, from behind, this is quite neat. Um, in holly wreaths, they used to use like a plastic backing that would get pinned in. Again, that's not going to be environmental. So I would leave it like this. So essentially now, I would put this into a container of water up to about an inch and a half, two inches deep. So essentially every flower and the straw is going to be soaked in water. And then as I say, the next morning, you would just lift that out depending on when you're gonna actually do the delivery. And by the time it's gone in a van and been delivered to where it needs to be, it'll be fine. It won't be dripping, but there'll be a moisture within it that works. So an interesting idea. We've obviously done our base here. As I say, if you wanted to add other elements, you could, you could add them in at the end just with a little wire. Um, again, the wire just being the thing that would hold it in place and allow you to add any extra material. But an interesting idea, I think if you want to do this and embrace it, then don't just make one and think that was too much trouble. I think the more you make, the quicker and uh, more efficient you would be. So an interesting idea. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, click here to subscribe, tap the bell and you'll be able to stay up to date with all our new videos and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And we're on Facebook as well.